being one of the people, being one of the people of Musa, it was very bad that the insult and the uh, transgression is coming from one of us. It's like if you're one of the people of Musa and you're feeling that this person, he's one of us and he's transgressing against us. It's not enough that Fir'aun is doing what he's doing, but even our people themselves, one of them, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him power and has given him money, he's transgressing against us. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions كَلَّا إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَيَطْغَى أَرَّأَهُ اسْتَغْنَى وَهُنَا سِرُّ الطُّغْيَانِ وَلَيْسَ الطُّغْيَانِ أَنْ يَكُونَ الْمَرْءُ أَنْ يَكُونَ وَلَيْسَ سَبَبُ الطُّغْيَانِ أَنْ يَكُونَ الْمَرْءُ ذَا مَالٍ وَلَكِنْ سَبَبُ الطُّغْيَانِ أَنْ يَرَى أَنَّهُ اسْتَغْنَى كَلَّا إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَيَطْغَى أَرَّأَهُ اسْتَغْنَى So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in Surah Al-Alaq that a human being shall transgress when he sees himself self-sufficient. It's not that when he has money. It's not that when he has power, it's, it's, it's the instant when he sees that he is in no need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That he's getting all of this out of himself, out of his intellect, out of his knowledge. This is where he starts transgressing. If قَالَ لَهُ قَوْمُهُ لَا تَفْرَحْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُحِبُّ الْفَرِحِينَ And this statement is very powerful. If I translate it literally, it would be that his people started telling him, don't be happy, don't rejoice. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not like those who are happy. And of course, it doesn't go this way. Also, inshallah, we'll be happy Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves us. But the, the idea of rejoicing in this way, the idea of rejoicing in a way that you forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And um, this is just a heads up that all these, many of these um, stories that we find in the Quran, Sometimes you find that there are statements that you feel they are a little bit exaggerated, they do not belong to me. Like I would never say, for example, I, I, I'm no need of Allah. I would never stand up like Fir'aun and say, Ana Rabbukum al-A'la, I'm, I'm your Lord. I, I would never do this. So, so the problem is that if you go through the ayat of the Qur'an and then you start saying, this ayah doesn't belong to me, this ayah is not, is not talking to me, and this ayah is you know, talking about other bad guys, so you find that 90% of the Qur'an is talking about the disbelievers, bad guys, talking about the ones who are transgressors, talking about... And then suddenly, you don't get affected by the Qur'an at all. But we, what we're trying to do today, inshallah, we'll try to interpolate all these things on ourselves. So we'll try to include ourselves in thinking, like, if I'm doing something close to this Qarun uh, behavior. Like, if I'm doing some Qarun-like uh, thinking. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala يقول, إِنْ قَالَ لَهُمْ قَوْمُهُ لَا تَفْرَحْ إن الله لا يحب الفرحين قال ابن عباس يعني المرحين وقال مجاهد يعني الأشرين البطرين الذين لا يشكرون الله على ما أعطاهم. So the 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 ones that are mentioned in this ayah, so Allah سبحانه وتعالى is talking about he does not like those who rejoice in a way of pride that they start denouncing and start you know belittling others and they start not feeling the bounty of Allah سبحانه وتعالى. And you know that. Rejoicing comes in the Qur'an, sometimes in a positive and sometimes in a negative way. تأتي أحيانا يأتي أحيانا الأمر بالفرحة ممدوحا أو مذموما في القرآن مذموما كما هنا وكما في الآية الأخرى فلما جاءتهم رسلهم بالبينات فرحوا بما عندهم من العلم وحق بهم ما كانوا به يستهزئون. So when their prophets and then when their messengers came and they presented their proofs towards them. Instead of accepting those proofs and following the messengers, they were happy and they were self-sufficient with the knowledge that they have. So this is, this is the type of, of rejoicing and the type of happiness that we don't want to have. The other type, which is the main focus here, Say that through the bounty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and through the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is the thing that they should rejoice therein. This is the thing that should make them happy. And this is if we really, if we really fix our compass, that we point to the correct direction and we have our correct frame of reference that we're thinking of Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a way that everything is coming from Him and in a way that how He blessed us with Quran and how He blessed us with Islam, then everything else is minor. And we'll start rejoicing these concepts. قُلْ بِفَضْلِ اللَّهِ يعني العلماء فسروها فضل الله الإسلام ورحمته القرآن وقيل فضل الله والإسلام ورحمته والتوفيق أن نكون من المسلمين. So many scholars they mention فضل الله the bounty of Allah as an Islam ورحمته as the Quran or an Islam and Allah سبحانه وتعالى has given us توفيق to become Muslims. So this is the thing that should make us happy and not the worldly matters. يقول الطاهر بن عشور والفرح المنهي عنه هو المفرد 
أي الذي تمحض للتعلق بمتاع الدنيا لأن الانكباب على ذلك يميت من النفس الاهتمام بالأعمال الصالحة. So, so Imam uh, Tahir ibn Ashur is uh, reinforcing this concept and he says that the rejoicing and the happiness that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is forbidding us from is that exaggerated one that stems from just loving the dunya and wanting to have more of the dunya and not focusing on acquiring more of al-akhirah. So like building your homes in al-akhirah. إذ قال لهم قومه لا تفرح إن الله لا يحب الفرحين وابتغ فيما آتاك الله الدار الآخرة ولا تنس نصيبك من الدنيا وأحسن كما أحسن الله إليك وابتغ فيما آتاك الله الدار الآخرة use those bounties that Allah سبحانه وتعالى has given you to build in the hereafter and this is a very important concept is that every one of us should look at what Allah سبحانه وتعالى has bestowed upon him at the bounties that Allah سبحانه وتعالى has given him or her So the bounties that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given everybody, they should look at these and try to use them for pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And again, this concept can be extrapolated on everything. And I don't want to exaggerate like talking about the nose and the ears and the eyes. Of course, these are, are well-known things that we, we should use them for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Think about it this way. Like you've given, you've given a person a gift and then they're using this gift against you. You'll feel very bad. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you eyes and then you're using these eyes to, obey, to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's giving you um, a tongue and, and then you're using this tongue to backbite people and, you know, and to grow animosity between Muslims and to breed hatred between, between them. So, so think about it this way and think about all other stuff. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you skills. Maybe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you um, some knowledge Then instead of you know, raising your ego and instead of uh, feeling proud of your knowledge, then you should use this knowledge to uh, uh, to help others. You should use this knowledge to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more. وَابْتَغِ فِي مَا أَتَاكَ اللَّهُ الدَّارَ الْآخِرَةِ وَلَا تَنْسَ نَصِيبَكَ مِنَ الدُّنْيَا معنى لا تنسى نصيبك من الدنيا يعني جاءت أغلب التفسير أن لا تنسى الحلال الطيب من الدنيا يعني لا تنسى أن لك أن لبدنك حقا وأن لزوجك حقا ولزوجك حقا وما إلى ذلك وجاء تفسير آخر يقول لا تنسى نصيبك من الدنيا أي لا تنسى مدة إقامتك في الدنيا يعني ماذا ماذا ملكت من الدنيا لم تملك منها إلا مدة عمرك وهو قليل فلا تنسى أن تستغله في في تعمير بيتك في الآخرة. So the 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 statement of لا تنسى نصيبك من الدنيا literally translates to do not forget your share of dunya. And this might have two meanings. Either it would mean like do not forget to have the halal type of rejoicing in the dunya. Or it would mean do not forget your time, your, your time limit of this dunya. So you're, you're having only a very small portion of this dunya, so don't forget yourself. And, and, and use, utilize this time to work for a better. إِنْ قَالَ لَهُ قَوْمُهُ لَا تَفْرَحْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُحِبُّ الْفَرِحِينَ وَابْتَغِ فِي مَا أَتَاكَ اللَّهُ الدَّارَ الْآخِرَةِ وَلَا تَنْسَ نَصِيبَكَ مِنَ الدُّنْيَا وَأَحْسِنْ كَمَا أَحْسَنَ اللَّهُ إِلَيْكَ And do good to others the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, just like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has been good to you. And this is again a very important concept. That when you're doing good to others, you don't think that you're doing good to them in reward of their good. Or you're waiting for a return from them. And I'm not doing this in a negative way. I'm not saying this like, you know, some people, they, they do good and then they start saying, I do good and nobody does good to me. We, we don't want to get into this. The idea is, is just we're not waiting for good from people. If it comes, alhamdulillah, people, alhamdulillah, we expect them to be good. Alhamdulillah, al khairu fi fil muslimin. Uh, but, but, but we're not waiting for this. We are just doing this because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at first place, He's given us, He's been good to us, that's why we're good to people. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when we're good to people, then uh, as a positive feedback, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is even more good to us. And this is, this is the correct reference that we want to have. If you're good to your wife, it's not because you're expecting her to be good, inshallah she'll be good, she'll be good, but, but it's because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is good to you. He's given you a nice wife, alhamdulillah. And He's given you, he's given you lots of bounties. And that's why you are being good to her, you're being good to your family, you're being good to your uh, children, you're being good to your parents. It's not because you're waiting for them to be good. This is a very important concept. وَأَحْسِنْ كَمَا أَحْسَنَ اللَّهُ إِلَيْكَ You're just, you're just expected to be good because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has always been good to you. وَلَا تَبْغِ الْفَسَادَ فِي الْأَرْضِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُحِبُّ الْمُفْسِدِينَ And don't go transgressing in lands because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala indeed does not like those who uh, spread corruption. 
قال انما اتيته على علم عندي وهنا قال المفسرون مثل ابن كثير يعني انما اعطانيه الله لعلم الله اني استحقه so, so he said that i have been given this because of my knowledge and some scholars like ابن كثير they interpret this as i have given this because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that i deserve it because maybe he was from the people of um, as he was from the people of Musa then he was he was mainly basically he was a muslim or like according to the legislation that was there at that time he was a muslim and he knows that everything is coming from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but still when he says that i have been given this because i deserve it because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that i deserve it and you guys you don't deserve this it's the same thing or is the more straightforward meaning that I have been, I have, I have all this because of my knowledge, because of my effort, because of my um, intellect. I'm uh, because I'm awesome. You guys are, are just low. You're you're lazy, and that's why you're asking me to be nice. So this is this is the type of um, Quranic behavior and Quranic thinking and mentality that we we try to avoid, inshallah Taala. قال إنما أتيته على علم عندي ألم يعلم أن الله قد أهلك من قبله من القرون من هو أشد منه قوة وأكثر جمعا ولا يسأل عن ذنوبهم المجرمون. He says this has been given to me only because of the knowledge that I possess. Did he not know that Allah subhanahu wa taala has destroyed before him generations who were stronger and more knowledgeable than him in might and greater in amount that they had collected? But those who are مجرمون they are not asked about their sins. So again, I'm just trying to. To recap this part of the khutbah, inshallah, with this idea is that sometimes we're not that explicit. أحيانا لا نكون بهذه البجاحة في طرح ما يدور في أذهاننا. ولكن هذا هو ما يدور. يعني sometimes we're not that explicit in in saying what's what's actually in our hearts. But this is this is indeed what's in our hearts. And and we really need to think about these, inshallah, in the lights of those ayat. قل قول هذا أستغفر الله لي. So those who are just seeking the desires of this life, they, they, they looked at this and they said, "Ya laita lana mithla ma uti Qarun." We wish that we had the same that Qarun that was given to Qarun. And, and notice the wording, "Uti Qarun." So they know that they have, he has been given this by Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. So it's not, it's not up to him. But, but they just want one similar to him. So he's been giving all this wealth. We want, we want the same. إنه لذو حظ عظيم. Indeed, he's a man of great fortune. And this is, and this is, this is something, is something fun that sometimes scholars they mention that غض البصر, like lowering your gaze, is applicable to these situations as well. When you see something that you know it is of the pleasure of this life, and you and you really desire this stuff, you don't look at it. So don't don't be tracing those fancy cars and stuff like this that you uh, you're incapable of getting. Because uh, I told you before the hadith. Uh, 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 إياكم أن تقول على الأغنياء فإنه حري أن لا تزدروا نعمة الله. So the Prophet is telling us don't don't be frequently getting with the rich people because this would make you look low or look you know look down to the blessings that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has given you. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has given you lots, but then because you're looking at things that are beyond what Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has given you, then you start belittling the bounties of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. قال الذين يريدون الحياة الدنيا يا ليت لنا مثل ما أوتي القارون إنه لذو حظ عظيم. وقال الذين أوتوا العلم ويلكم ثواب الله خير لمن آمن وعمل صالحا ولا يلقاها إلا الصابرون. 
فخسفنا به وبداره الارض فما كان له من فئه ينصرونه من دون الله وما كان من المنتصرين so those who have been blessed with knowledge with real knowledge now it's not like the knowledge of قارون it's the real knowledge we're talking about it's the knowledge of al akhirah so those who were blessed with knowledge they said to these people who were you know uh, whom the who had their eyes looking at the pomp of Qarun, they told them, وَيْلَكُمْ ثَوَابُ اللَّهِ خَيْرٍ Woe to you! The bounty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the reward of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is better. So yes, you're seeing all this stuff in front of your eyes, but what's waiting for you in Jannah is much more than this. وَلَا يُلَقَّاهَا إِلَّا الصَّبِرُونَ And nobody would, um, would be blessed to say this except those who are really patient and persevere in, you know, in, in, uh, in thinking about the akhirah and in working for the akhirah so those who can really say this out of their hearts this statement that the reward of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is better and saying it while really feeling it those are the ones who are really patient those are the ones who have sabr وَلَا يُلَقَّاهَا إِلَّا الصَّبِرُونَ وَقِيلَ فِي ذَلِكْ وَلَا يُلَقَّاهَا أَيْ لَا يُلَقَّى يعني دخول الجنة أو لا يُلَقَّى أن يكون أغلب همه الآخرة إلا الصابر فخسفنا به وبداره الأرض يقول الله جل وعلا فخسفنا به وبداره الأرض الله سبحانه وتعالى commanded the earth to swallow him and to swallow all his place all his dwelling place فما كان له من فئة من فئة ينصرونه من دون الله وما كان من المنتصرين so he did not have any people to help him and support him when the torment of Allah سبحانه وتعالى befall him and he was never one of those who succeeded and and here is a little bit tangent that brothers, when you, before you transgress, and, and you don't have to be transgressing the way Qarun is transgressing, but before you're transgressing at your level, at least think of the ayat that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned here, and other similar ayat. Like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَلَمَّا آسَفُونَ انْتَقَمْنَا مِنْهُمْ فَأَرَقْنَاهُمْ أَجْمَعِينَ So when they angered us, when, they, uh, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was angry because of them, انْتَقَمْنَا مِنْهُمْ we just took our revenge from them. So that's simple. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala يعني ينتقم ولا يبالي. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wouldn't care for these people if they are if they are those type of transgressors. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam He says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says الكبرياءُ ردائي والعظمةُ إزاري فمن نازعني واحداً منهما قذفته في النار. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that pride, honor, and you know, these, these values, those belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that whoever vies with me, whoever competes with me in one of these values, then I would throw him in hellfire. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not care. يقول الله جل وعلا فخسفنا به وبداره الأرض فما كان له من فئة ينصرونه من دون الله وما كان من المنتصرين فأصبح الذين وأصبح الذين تمنوا مكانه بالأمس يقولون يقولون عيك أن الله يبسط الرزق لمن يشاء من عباده ويقدر لولا أمن الله علينا لخسف بنا ويك أنه لا يفلح الكافرون. Can I ask the brothers to come a little bit closer إن شاء الله سودا. Yeah, accommodate your brothers in the back. Thank you. Thank you. So those who desired, who had desired for a position like قارون, previously they they started to say and they started to reflect upon what's happening in front of their eyes. They said. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, indeed we now believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives the ample provision, He enlarges the provision for the ones He wants and He restricts it for the ones He wants. So it's all up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then had not Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed us, then we would have suffered the same, the same destiny that, he, that Qarun suffered. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had, had truly given us what He's given Qarun, then we would have suffered like Him. وَيْكَأَنَّ اللَّهَ يَبْسُطُ الرِّزْقَ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ وَيَقْدِرُ لَوْلَا أَمَّنَّ اللَّهُ عَلَيْنَا لَخَسَفَ بِنَا وَيْكَأَنَّهُ لَا يُفْلِحُ الْكَافِرُونَ تِلْكَ الدَّارُ الْآخِرَةُ نَجْعَلُهَا لِلَّذِينَ لَا يُرِيدُونَ عُلُوًا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَلَا فَسَادًا وَالْعَاقِبَةُ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ عباد الله يعني أنواع البشر يعني قد تنقسم حسب تلك الآية إلى أربعة الذين يريدون علوا والذين يريدون فسادا والذين يريدون علوا وفسادا والذين لا يريدون علوا ولا فسادا so brothers, we can, we can try to classify people according to this ayah. So the ayah says, or translates into that home of the hereafter, Jannah. It is for the, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shall assign to those who are not seeking pride and who are not seeking corruption in this earth, in this land. 
and the um, and the good end is for al muttaqin and the good end is for the fearful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if we, if we think that some people might be seeking honor and pride, and they don't want to be transgressors, they don't want to make corruption, but they just want to be high. They, not high, I mean, they want to be, they want to be uh, mighty, they want to be of honor and of, you know, of wealth, and they, they're just seeking this. And some people, they just want to, um, they want to be corrupted. They, they want to, to, to spread corruption on earth. They just want to be strong and powerful. And some other people, they want both. <laughs> And neither of these, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, give them uh, the bounty of al-akhirah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just gives it, gives it for the ones who do not seek this nor this. Who the, the ones that just want to be like as, as humble as everybody else. And as, you know, um, humble towards the believers and towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, just like everybody else. And they don't want to spread corruption on earth. Those are the ones, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make me and you amongst these people. Those are the ones that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives them the blessing of Al-Akhir. Allahumma ghafir lana dhunubana wa israfana fi amrina wa thabit aqdamana wa ansurna ala al-qawm al-kafirin. Allahumma alimna ma yanfa'na. Allahumma anfa'na bima alimtana. Allahumma zidna ilman wa amala. Allahumma la tahrimna al-ikhlasa abada. Allahumma taqabbal minna innaka anta al-sami'u al-alim. Wa tub alayna innaka anta innaka anta al-tawab al-rahim. Allahumma wa alayka bil-mu'atadeen al-zalimeen. Allahumma sallam.